Hi, this is Lilia with the Help Yourself podcast and with me today I've got Paddy Hogg and Paddy is a grassroots activist and we're going to delve into lots of um, things that he's experienced in his um, interesting experiential lifetime and also he is the councillor for North Lanarkshire so has been in the, if you like, the mix of uh, making changes and suggesting things that will work better for your um, extensive community. Hi Paddy, thank you so much for coming on. Hi Lily, pleasure to be with you. It was good to hear one of your lectures recently, so that was a real pleasure and to get a copy of your book. Ah, thank you, thank you. Yes, uh, um, we've only met recently, but obviously we've got lots in common and one of the main things that we share is a, a, a kind of burning obsession for Scotland and to help and health freedom and to help the people of Scotland understand all the things that we understand in a bid to empower them and to create a better um, community. And I mean the, 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 the big Scottish community for everyone. Now, you can you just tell um, people that I've never met to the kind of nutrition because we're going to specifically today talk about genetically modified foods and um, glyph glyphosate which is two of my big 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 gripes when it comes to our children and grandchildren's health but if you just give a little bit of your background of you know all the things that you've done and how you came to realize that things were not right <laughs> yeah well poof, how long have you got <laughs> <laughs> I was an athlete when I was 18 um, and studied sports nutrition. Mm -hmm. That means looking at things like just keeping yourself reasonably fit and healthy and strong and what are the best nu nutrition well, sort of benefits for that, whether it would be, you know, most people that go to a gym will consume protein. So you're, you're starting to look at amino acids and you're looking at what keeps a person healthy and fit. So you're looking at things like zinc, vitamin C for that can help as a diuretic you take maybe five grams a day and eventually you start realizing that the government's recommended daily amounts of these life-giving um, supplements like vitamin C is absolutely essential if you've got very very low vitamin C you're going to you're quite likely to get scurvy now if the nutritional value of the food in Scotland gets any worse and it's quite bad what's sold in the, in the supermarkets in my judgment we might see scurvy coming back scurvy can kill people if you're very low in vitamin d we know from during the second world war that people got rickets now that's a bendiness of the knees and weakening of the bone structure so we start realizing that these essential vitamins like vitamin c will keep you alive sailors learned take, to take um limes etc or you know lemons mm -hmm. to get the essential vitamin c they need many many years ago so we start realizing that there are you could say a whole group of absolutely essential um micronutrients and that means certain minerals and also things like vitamin c vitamin d but these things i mean i ended up studying orthomolecular medicine so after leaving school, I was a psychiatric nurse and picked up a bit of information there, but I kept going with the nutritional science and studied that and got more and more into the science. And because the science papers are coming out every few years and the knowledge is accumulative, you've got to keep studying it. And I ended up getting to the point where a bit older, and my dad, I've got a few kids. So my kids, when my children were small, twin girls, a young boy, you've got to shop for healthy food for them. And then suddenly you're finding things like, you read the labels and you're trying to work out what's there. And you find out that things like GMO, genetically modified food, and things like glyphosate, some people, you know, first hearing of that, you don't see that in the food label. And you're thinking, what is all this stuff? And you try and check it out yourself. So you do your own research and you find that it's not easy going down the aisles of any supermarket to try and find good healthy food for your kids and it was a shock to me to find that things like you know you you can get caught in advertising cliches like Quitabix is really good for you it's Quitabix the builder makes you strong 
and you find it's got parts per million of this glyphosate stuff, which is not good for us. And you think, oh my God. And then even one of my favorite cereals was Cheerios. I know I probably shouldn't mention brand names. I ended up having to give these up and then start looking for a healthier food. But I was brought up in a generation where um, my parents, especially my dad, was one of these sort of natural country guys. So I'm, I'm from the country in Galloway. And he would go and get what they call leaf mold. He would get seaweed with alkaline in it and kelp, which has got um, iodine. And about 70% of women are deficient in iodine, right? And iodine is so important for various things in our body. And without it, the deficiencies cause certain illnesses. So I think that's something we need to flag up. If you're, if you're deficient in vitamin C, you're going to have health conditions. If you're deficient in vitamin D, if you're deficient in iodine, you've got issues. So these are causing chronic illness. And Charlotte Gerson, she said that all disease is caused by two things, excess yeah. and deficiency. Yeah. And, you know, we are now, we have got, and I always say to people, you know, understand your macronutrient percentages because what we're do, we've done is we've taken out all the vegetables very much. We're eating way, way less vegetables and the vegetables that we do eat have got way less nutrition, 60 yeah. to 40% nutrition less than even 30 years ago because of what we've done to the soil and the sprays yeah. and the artificial yeah. fertilizers. So when we don't understand and what normally nature just took care of us, we would forage, we would be full because yeah. a lot of people are hungry, not for calories, but for nutrients. Yeah. The body's saying, give me, give me, give me, give me. But then what ends up going in is sugars and starch yeah. usually and fat um, without the the essential carbohydrates that have been through the soil and picked up all the elements and the, the minerals and the trace elements that then the body can recognize and utilize. Yeah, that's absolutely bang on. I think, I think that's a sort of key way of putting it, that you can eat um, lots of what appeared to be healthy food now in 2021, and yet 30 years ago, they were definitely healthy because they were growing what we would call organic now, but that was natural then, throwing seaweed and mold man called it leaf mold and digging that stuff into the garden for your potatoes etc and that was putting the nutrients into the garden that would then go into the, the potatoes or the carrots etc and we can hear stuff from government and tv saying make sure you eat five a day of vegetables but if those five a day have all got glyphosate soaked into them or the gmo you're not getting the same nutrients that people were getting many years ago. So that food was healthier food and the people eating them were healthier people. And if we're told eat five a day, but you, you get the stuff, say the people from who are maybe signed on or poorer groups can't afford some of the um, non-GMO food or can't find out what it is, or you know to, to understand what you can buy because they've been brainwashed a bit that you get your five a day and that's you, you're going to be healthy. You've really got to know where to go and get that five a day or you can grow it yourself. If you don't have a bit of land, I mean, a garden, <laughs> wishful thinking that we all would have plenty of land to grow our own fruit. I think that's something for the future. But it's, it's difficult for mums and dads to navigate where the healthy food is and what to Absolutely. do. Absolutely. Well, with the movement Mums Across Scotland, and I have completely taken this from the States with Zen Honeycutt, who created Mums Across America. Mm -hmm. And she, had, she has three sons who were all sick and they were slowly being poisoned um, by genetically modified foods. And obviously young bodies exhibit, the, it's their behaviour that it shows in. Yeah. One had asthma, one had life-threatening allergies and one had autism symptoms and you know this is my big thing for um mums across scotland then said to me take the name go with it you know and because she her son's within six weeks of going organic um we're all well i mean that's wow. astounding one of them had 10 times the natural uh, the the legal whatever that is levels of glyphosate i mean we should have no glyphosate in our body but anyway so we're going to replicate that because i 
truly believe that no mum deliberately poisons her child, let's face it. Yes, we may have a bit of an idea sugar's not great, or, but I think the one thing, and I've always avoided um, nutrition in kids because it's a very emotive subject. Parents are exhausted and overwhelmed already. You start judging them and what they're feeding their kids and you're going to get a black backlash. <laughs> but I think the one thing that we can do is help them to understand that pasta or that pizza may have been grown with wheat that is genetically modified and sprayed yeah. with up to seven different chemicals. And much as we're banging on about gluten, very often the inflammation in the gut is coming from the fact it's been genetically modified and that it's been sprayed. So I think as a parent, you can really make choices. And our plan is to traffic light the shops all over Scotland where people mainly shop so that the, you can say, well, that's an amber. You'll get some good stuff in yeah. there. That's green. It's all good in there. And that's red. Forget it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and we want the shops to come on board because I do believe as well that the shops, it's all consumer driven ultimately. When we go into the shop and 80% of the food is still being bought by women. And, you know, if you don't buy crap, you don't eat crap. <laughs> it's that simple. So we have to kind of stand up for the health of our children. And the other thing that we know is that it tends to be people in poorer communities, yeah. um, less um, privileged I don't really like that word, but we know that we understand they don't, they've not had the same start in life yeah. that um, the likes of I had. So um, we need to make sure that they understand. And obviously then resistance comes in. A lot of people don't want to change. They don't want to know, but I think at least we have to give them the option of understanding that when your child's gut gets inflamed with stuff that was never meant to go in there, um, then that will transfer into poor behavior and foggy brain and inability to learn and focus and love. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's something that, that really upsets me because I know that a lot of people simply don't know. Yeah. And when their kids are, what, I want this, I want, can I get an ice cream? Can I get a yogurt? Last night, my grandson, can I get this? Can I get that? And you're just like, oh, <laughs> trying to keep it healthy. Um, at the same time, not be the, that horrible gran that nobody wants to go and visit because she doesn't give you any sugar. You know, it's, and that's why if we as a, as a community, as a country say, no guys, we, we've got the science now that clearly shows. Yeah. Our children are becoming sick because of the, the food that we are buying. Can we all get together and change that? Well, the answer yeah. of course is yes, yeah. but will we? That's a different, a different question. Well, I, th I think the, the powers that be, like the Scottish government, if I was there, if I was in, if it was in Yusuf's shoes just now as a health minister, I would be tackling chronic illness. I'm aware of the signs that, just for mentioning one thing like sugar, with all us sort little of kids now and again, had that temptation to consume chocolate bars, etc. And when you get older, you find out if you check the signs that what happens is sugar hits the same endorphins in the brain as heroin does, and it's very addictive. And we now know, those that study cancer, that excessive sugar, particularly sugary drinks, is like rocket fuel to cancerous growth. So once someone's quite ill, and I mean, it's a real shame that, that um, in health, that we don't see um, that the, cum the accumulation of toxic stuff in the body from what we've, what we consume and what's been produced in so-called food. So-called food yeah. is becoming more toxic and causing more chronic illness. And yet there's hardly anyone at that level of government. When I sat in a discussion one time in a committee about ASN pupils in schools. So there's a, there's a huge growth. So if you look back to 30 years ago, there would hardly be any pupils considered to be ASN, maybe four or five percent. It might have grown to about 10 percent 15 years ago. I think in North Archer, it's now it's roughly 22 percent of pupils in school are considered to be assisted needs learning. And my assessment there is that a lot of that is based on what you might call the symptoms or things that determinants that cause 
chronic illness that contribute to what's called the autistic spectrum. Now that might, there might be a whole lot of different things that are causing that. But if you picked one specific little example, if you consume too much sugar and you look at the meta metabolism, sugar will take out, literally like a domino effect, will take out the benefits of vitamin B6. Vitamin B6 then influences GABA. GABA is a neurotransmitter that helps you relax, focus, concentrate. Therefore, we can deduce that excessive sugar will um, damage someone's ability to focus and learn. So if we will certainly look at the diet, and unfortunately, because the senior officials in the council don't really have the power to say, yes, let's try this, or it's in the legislation, they tick all the boxes, they do the rules. You know, national government dictates the legislation and local government ticks the boxes and does what they do, what they must do legally. So it, it was just glazed over. It was a bit like I was trying to say, look, let's change the diet, improve the diet in the ASN schools and see if the behaviour and the learning increases, which it, we know it will. I do. I followed Dr. Abram Hoffer for a long time, brilliant psychiatrist from Canada, and he was into often molecular medicine, treat the cells of the body and the body will become healthier. So he used, um, I think it was niacin, Mm -hmm. yes pure schizophrenia well other people were saying this is a condition for life it cannot be cured here's the medication but Abraham Hoffer was curing schizophrenia in the late 50s and 60s right through until his death and yet everyone should have followed what he was doing so niacin one of the b vitamins mm -hmm. so for healthy brain function you need healthy b vitamins all of these things were natural, probably to the 60s, 70s, maybe late 70s, 80s. But once you start getting excessive amounts of weed killer called glyphosate in particular, once that accumulates and is used in so many crops all over the world, you start to see the net effect coming through in chronic health. And because of the companies behind it being so massive, and you know, the profits of these organizations tend to be um, way beyond the money that the Scottish government gets. So they can buy politicians, they get massive advertising campaigns, and they can buy off scientists who will say, oh yeah, this stuff's reasonably safe. Mm -hmm. And it's like fighting against the tobacco industry. Absolutely. 30, 40 years. So we've, we've had a cumulative damage to so many people, and it hits me in the heart that chronic illness is not being tackled head on by our Scottish government. Because if you Absolutely. claim to be a patriot, you should be concerned about the health of all the population. Absolutely, I totally kids. agree. And yeah. everything that we are told is actually the opposite of, yeah. you know, um, improving and boosting our immune system. Yeah. Hugging, you know, being with your friends, being yeah. able to offload, <laughs> Been out in the been outside. I mean, it's just crazy, and I totally agree. I don't think any of our politicians understand a health and b uh, consciousness. Uh, that's how it seems to me. So really yeah, don't get me started on that. But why people trust in these big institutions when we know the pharmaceutical company are spending five billion yeah. on two things: lobbying, yeah. <laughs> which is bribing. Let's face it; it's a nice yeah, word for bribing, yeah. and marketing. Yeah. Now, if you had um, that level of power, you know, think the good you could do. But instead of that, it's all about the, the pound. It is infuriating. And then it's even more infuriating because people cannot see it and will not see it. And they want to defend right. it with, yeah. you know. So anyway, um, yeah, so let's talk. Because the other thing that, um, you know, in terms of being an activist um, and wanting to instigate, making sure that change happens. I mean, I think with Roundup, we were talking about, yeah, it's great, kills weeds, right? But there is a huge price to be paid for that. And anybody that's spraying it should know how carcinogenic it is. And even Monsanto, they've been sued successfully yeah. for the cancer that they've caused. Um, so people that work for in the council and are, are using these yeah. carcinogenic should, should be warned 
yeah. they should be adequately clothed. But also the idea that, well, it's cheaper than paying men to strim mm -hmm. and weed <gasps> instead of like, uh, but our children can be come, you know, terminally sick with this stuff. And you're yeah. talking about how much it costs to, I mean, it's mental. So it's, it's basically one thing. If, if, if the short term profits for shareholders in Monsanto or some big organization, obviously they were taken over by Bayer, they short term profits are obviously good for those with the investments. Mm -hmm. But what's the knock on effects? If you've got, what, 40% um, of your population with chronic illnesses, with three or four, I mean, we know that glyphosate causes lots of different things, right? One of them being, well, it's, it's an endocrine disruptor, which means it affects people's hormones. It can contribute to fatty liver tissue. Now, as soon as you've got fatty tissue over your liver, that means your ACE2 receptors don't function very well. So we find with the outcomes of this infection that's going around just now, if you have got too much fatty liver tissue, it can't you can't defend yourself. So it's affecting the immune system everywhere. And if someone is, um, you know, what we call obesity, that means you've got fatty tissue basically blocking the vitamin D receptors. So blocking them up, you know, layers over them. We know that um, glyphosate, commonly known as Roundup, has um, various ways that it, that it attacks people. And it's, it's basically germ warfare for crops to keep the germs or bugs or things off, off them. So they spray it with the big tractors going through the fields right near the start. And then before the crop is harvested, they use it again. And once it's done and they've cut the crop, they even spray it more. This has only happened, I forget, the, maybe the last decade or so. And it's used as a, what's called a, as a desiccant there. That's for drying it. So, so once, once even the crop's cut, they're spraying it once again and it soaks into it. So in case there's any flies or any mold or anything that gets on it there, that's a, another way of cleaning it up from their viewpoint. So it puts more and that is the final way of getting so many more parts of glyphosate into the human body. And what, what, what you and I know about it is that Glyphosate, when it's sprayed right at the start, prevents the soil, and you could call that the soil microbiome, but the, the healthy ingredients of this of um, soil ecology from the different micro, um, what would you call them? This a whole microbiological process of creating healthy soil where you've got magnesium, you've got manganese, you've got potassium, you've got all these different healthy nutrients in soil. That would naturally go up through the roots into the plant. So say it's a potato or watermelon or something. One of my favorite healthy foods to eat is watermelon, right? So you'd expect certain nutrients to go into these foods when they're being grown. The glyphosate chelates all that. Now chelate, chelation just means they stick together, they clump together, and it stops the nutrients going into the food. So glyphosate makes the food less healthy. So when you're eating um, whether it's whatever crop it is, it's generally wheat, barley, oats, that sort of stuff, but you've got other crops as well. You're getting hardly a third of the nutritional value from something that was organic or grown just naturally many years ago without the use of these um, so-called weed killers, because they're doing far more than weed killing, far, far more, and far more damage to the food. So we're, we're in some ways, we're eating an illusion. We're thinking we're eating something that's very healthy and we're eating something that's actually toxic to the body. That should be a, a wake up call to anyone consuming the food because we should have informed consent about this food. The Absolutely. government don't even explain and there's no list on the food saying 400 parts per million or four parts per billion glyphosate. I know, I know. We don't and know. the thing is what most people I've noticed is they trust the government. <laughs> You know, it's like, well, if that was happening, the government would tell you, don't be so ridiculous and naive. And that's why people like you and I are 
uh, trying our best to wake yeah. people up to what's happening to our children because people do not understand. If your yeah. belly's on fire due to all that crap, no amount of good teaching and no amount of great parenting is going to change that. Your child is, is suffering. Yeah. And all because of greed and stupidity. Yeah. And I don't know whether they did, did it deliberately or not. I don't really care. The fact is it still happens and wow. we can change it by shopping places where we know and starting yeah. to grow our own. We have to. We've got tons of land in Scotland. Yeah. And we can, the only way we know what is in the food is if we're actually buying it from somebody local that we trust and we're making it ourselves. I think that's the way to go. We need to go with local farmers and encourage the farmers to become much more yes. um, organic in terms of what they grow and let people visit the farms, ask the farmers, do you mind showing people how you're growing it? Yes. And we need, we need to flag up the basic scientific reality that the process by which you um, spray the likes of glyphosate, what it's mainly doing is one key thing. It's killing off an enzyme, big, long, complicated name to it, but one key enzyme is prevented in the growth of what we call weeds, right? So-called weeds that, because they really just want to look after the plant that they're growing and make sure everything else is cleared out, keep the stuff, you know, you don't have to get extra stuff. One enzyme, and that one enzyme is, affects the growth of amino acids in the so-called weeds. It just, it's what's called the shaky weight pathway. In fact, I should check my notes, make sure, aye. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Shaky weight pathway, you must get this right, right, in plants. Now, it was believed that the human um, gut microbiome wasn't similar at all. So therefore, it damaged and killed off all of the weeds, right? But they assumed for many years, and they got away with assuming that it didn't affect the human microbiome. Mm -hmm. Our gut microbiome has got that same um, shaky mate pathway. So the bacterial sort of um, parts of our gut microbiome have got that same pathway. So if you inhibit, once the glyphosate gets into the food and we consume it, you are destroying a lot of your gut microbiome. And as we know, at least 80% of the human immune system is within our gut microbiome. Now, if you're decimating that literally with, uh, well, it's, it's quite a glyphosate and it's a, a powerful antibiotic. It really kills most things it hits. So even in parts per billion, it will damage your gut microbiome. And we know there's effects in terms of things like autism, neurotransmitters. We know it. We it, know. It's, it's at the, the scientific argument is getting further and further to point to more and more damage being done. So Plus it kills the bees. It's, aye, aye. Which is really Absolutely, incredibly yeah. stupid. Aye. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think the... I wanted to talk about the, you know, the microbiome, obviously, because uh, we're now the kind of latest neuroscience, which also goes yeah. along with the microbiome, where um, if, because we, 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 it's the Pasteur versus Bichamp model, where mm -hmm. Louis Pasteur was like, kill the germ, kill the germ, kill the germ. And Bichamp said, no, it's the territory the germ falls uh, in. Mm -hmm. And that, of course, is exactly what we've seen with this pandemic. It's like, kill, kill, keep everybody away instead of looking at our own immune system to see yeah. why we're so scared um, of something. So it's that yeah. old debate that we, you know, to solve a problem, we feel we need to kill instead of harmonize. And, yeah. and the, the, the microbiome, with, that's why we're bringing in fermented foods and pickles and all the stuff that was used to be um, eaten in Scotland. You know, we have a phenomenal food source here before it's been decimated by fishing, et cetera, and, and you know, farming. But, you know, our salmon, trout, mackerel, herring, brain food, brambles, gooseberries, raspberries, yeah. all that grew wild. We And then they'd be made into, they'd be salted, they'd be cured, they'd be smoked, they'd be pickled and fermented to yeah. keep us going through the winter when we would really mainly have root crops. So, you know, there's... <laughs> 
what I think, you know, um, and I know you agree, is that we're playing God. We think we know better than nature. We're trying to adjust her, modify her. We're now changing our RNA. That's how arrogant we are, that we know better. We're playing God. We're changing nature. We're changing the crops. We're changing the DNA. We're interfering in something that was pretty damn cool and intelligent the it way was, it was. It, na nature and while well, we're we're umbilical of the earth we're we're all creatures of god you know no matter what level we assume with yes. human ego that we are part of i mean i i absolutely adore nature and there's nothing more um it's almost a spiritual connection for me you know i'm a fisherman's son so i brought it out in the sea where it was calm wild stormy just loved it even frozen was a challenge you know hands like ice didn't care it was just like it was just great to be part of nature so everything you said there i went picking brambles and baskets buckets my mother made um bramble jelly we went to get crab apples they are so wee creatures then you know we <laughs> and rhubarb and sugar aye tons and tons of alkaline stuff we were eating mm -hmm. climbing up the trees eating them as a kid thinking god these are I didn't think these are full of alkaline stuff that's good for my body. <laughs> I remember chewing them thinking, my God, these suck your jaws in, you know, but yeah. I, parts of, it should be part of childhood. Then when you're older, you realize you pick up an apple in the supermarket thinking, wow, this is shiny. And we all like shiny things. Well, magpies that way, you know. Yeah. And then you realize that that apple has spent a year before it came from the tree to get into the supermarket, that it's covered in like petroleum gel. And it stays shiny if you set it in your house, because I've done this thinking, because after I read um, Dr. Suzanne Lockhart's book, My Diet, you know, she's a food scientist and really probably Scotland's sharpest nutritionist. You know, if anyone's watching this, get on Facebook, join up with Suzanne's My Diet Facebook group, because you will learn week after week after week. What she doesn't know isn't worth knowing. Yes. Right? And that one horrified me, I thought, I was telling my kids, yeah, eat your five a day, get your healthy apple. Now I will be peeling them all because I didn't think an apple. An apple for me was something like you would maybe pinch one when you were nine or ten, jump over a fence and go, oh, yummy, big red ripe, ripe apples. Or, <laughs> and you would see them rot. You would see bits on the, you know, if they've fallen off to the, from the tree to the, to the ground. You would see just the natural decay, and an apple will decay. You cut it open, and it will de decay quickly. But yet, these pristine, perfect, shiny apples will stay like that for maybe two years. Mm -hmm. That is not nature. That is not natural. Mm -hmm. So we need for. I mean, I know you're going to mention GMOs, but if something will not decay naturally, you're not going to ingest it and process it and get the nutrients in a natural way. If something's going to last forever out there, your gut's going to have some job breaking it down, yeah. There's a really good book, The Rock to Rot Theory, uh -huh. um, Denis and Anand, and that was, you know, he, because we're talking about grains and, you know, there's I'm not going to start talking about nutrition because it's much more complex, especially uh -huh. now that our guts, so many guts are compromised. Yeah. What you would consider a healthy diet for one person would be for another because if they can't digest the food, then it's not a healthy food. So you have to work with people where they're at. But yeah, yeah. he, you know, like a grain's designed to get blown around a field and eventually it finds a place somewhere and it germinates. And that's why I think, you know, pre sprouted, you know, soaked sourdoughs, these where the process some of the process has already started to save the body the all the hard work. Um, and, you know, again, exactly like you're saying, leave your burger outside and see how long it takes to um, go back to the earth, because ultimately everything should be going back to uh, the earth. Uh, um, and if it's not doing that, um, you know, then <laughs> why? <laughs> because it's when you put it into your body, um, you know, and I mean, I, I want to kind of end this in a lighter note because, um, <laughs> it, you know, I, I was a nutritionist for years and it's right. me, it's it's simple to me, don't eat shite. Everybody knows, everybody knows what not to eat, right? right? So it's not the knowledge, we know that. 
And as you sort of touched on there about the sugar addiction, and I heard this week that around a third of the population, mm -hmm. human population, become addicted to sugar because it's eight times more addictive than cocaine. Yeah. And that then becomes a responsibility for us, for again, for our children, for our grandchildren. And yeah. I, you know, just not buying that stuff so it's not in your house. It's not a treat for the brain, for yeah. the gut biome. You're either feeding the disease army or you're feeding the healing army. You've so, given the bricks yeah. for the microbiota, you yeah. know, like the little worker ants to go and fix things in your body or not. So, but we, the, one of the big things that we can do to start with is to avoid GMOs and anything that's been sprayed with glyphosate. Yeah. That, that, just that one thing alone. So your pizza, your pasta and your bread, making a choice that it's organic. And if you just start there, um, and then you can start to move in because change is difficult for all of us, particularly yeah. if we're tired and overwhelmed. And if everybody else is eating rolls and bacon and burgers and pizzas yeah. and you're sitting there trying to eat healthily, that's not particularly good for you either. But what we can do as communities is we can go, right, OK, let's get some healthy breakfast in the go for our children, because at the end of the day, we're giving them to teachers to look to, to teach mm -hmm. and to keep all day. So we yeah. owe it to them. And we owe it to our children and we owe it to ourselves to keep yeah. that symbiotic relationship mm -hmm. as peaceful and um, harmonious as possible. And I think a big part of that is getting the word out, like all these things you've shared with us today. So aye, aye. are you going to be putting out um, menus or you're going to make yes, a list of places to go? What we're looking at doing actually in our guile is making healthy breakfasts that mums can pick up and um, yeah. trying to get the mums involved at the school level. And, you know, maybe I do a Monday and I get lots of, you know, make some healthy muffins or chop up some oh, fruit or get yeah. some porridge and granola. And so that we've got um, options because the last thing we want to do is make mums feel more oh, um, sh ashamed. You know, but I mean, it's oh, it's a difficult enough job. There's so much judgment goes around nowadays with, you know, being a mum, being a parent, but being a single parent, whatever, you know, label. Um, that uh, what we want to do is just uh, identify that things need to change and then all get together and yeah. make it happen and make it work. And that has to be driven by some un a coalition of unstoppable mums. And that's what Heal right. Scotland right. is in the process of right. creating. Brilliant. If I can do anything to help, I mean, we stopped the amount of motion in 2019 to stop the spraying of glyphosate in North Ayrshire. It didn't happen immediately because some group put in for a environmental impact assessment which was like you kidding me that's why we stopped the damn <laughs> put the motion why i stopped put the motion in as an independent councillor but there was but a i chance thought that, you were the only council area that had banned it did i did i mean that somewhere i forget if there's another place that has done so but um i think the european union have sort of put together I mean, they're, they're aware of the damage. I mean, the yeah. WHO has got glyphosate down as a, a potential cause of cancer, et cetera. And I think there's a, a, people are wanting to phase it out, or that's the way they're saying, well, don't stop it just now, just phase it out slowly. And we had a chance of it coming back in there, and there was a boat that went 12 to 11 to what? keep the ban. So we almost lost the ban. You know, people just don't seem to really get the serious damage it causes. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, it's the most efficient way of controlling weeds. So um, I was hoping to put together some leaflets and go to some of the areas. I'd also put in a motion to the council that passed, but might not get the results I was looking for. Because a good idea, sometimes people jump on it. And the good, that good idea was make as many allotments as we can, use the land. But if you've got developers who want, who expect, oh, we'll help you build the allotments, and they're all going to cost about a quarter of a million each, as opposed to just say, there's a big piece of land out there, yeah. tear the turf off with a turf lifter, get it motivated, and let's get planting, you know, the way you might do in a farm, if you knew the farmer, and get stuck in. Mm -hmm. Never as simple as that with councils. There's always a contractor waiting like a huge... Um, I know. For it. Just I'm, wait to take advantage of the idea. The other problem is... Exactly, Sorry, sorry to cut you off there, but I, um, the other problem is that it's the invisible and this idea, oh, it's just a billionth 
you know, we consider that with mercury as well. Oh, it's nanoparticles. They have to say it's so small, it doesn't matter. And that's just rubbish. You know, the, all it takes is a nanoparticle sometimes. Yeah, yeah. So we need to understand. And also now with the ridiculous amount of chemicals in our lives, from our body products to our foods, to our soil and our air and our water, that yeah. um, if anybody looking out can't see that we have a problem, it's about pollution. Our five elements, we've polluted everything and everywhere with our ability to think long or inability to think long term and I mean for future generations so that I think you know we need to it's a bit like plastic why is it just not being banned today <laughs> you know we need this because it's all you know rubbing shoulders and money's got to be made business etc and you're just like do you not see we're going to go extinct if we do not wake up very very quickly we're well, making people sicker and sicker i mean even something like you know, as a kid brought up with sort of like beans on toast cheese on top get stuck in there you've been out all day and you're hungry you've been working and starving and most of us wouldn't know that inside a t even a tin of beans there's a film of plastic inside that too and that film of plastic contains estrogen mm -hmm. so too many boys shouldn't be consuming too much estrogen it's not I good for them. Estrogen basically is not for the boys. To be now, I'm not saying all the girls should be eating beans. You know what no, I mean? No, but we just the assume... hormone disrupted the hormone cancers that we have that are so yeah. prevalent, breast and prostate. I mean, it's crazy. Aye. But there's hormone dis and and then there's sugar in the beans, and this is why, yeah. you know, it's a minefield and it can be really confusing. But yeah. we need to get back into our communities and take control of it. Absolutely. Aye. I'm hoping to do more active work just as an activist, not as a counsellor, and getting leaflets and stuff to people yeah. in the areas with the poorest families to try and see if we can find, I mean, I'll even go to farmers to see yes. if they find places where they can get their own allotments and grow their own food. Yes. I want to try and facilitate that. If the you go on... Things quicker, give them information about glyphosate and try and work with other people on benefiting and people's health to reduce chronic illness because our government's doing nothing about it. Absolutely, and they're not going to do anything. Right. Um, if you go on Zen's site, Moms Across America, she's got loads of uh, material that you might get some really, well, you will get some good inspiration yeah. there, and it could save you a lot of work. Um, right. She's got Zach Bush. He, ah. Before he became enormous the way he is now, he yeah. was he just got right behind the work that she was doing to ensure that our children and other all our children um, get the best possible chance at life. So thank you for everything that you're doing, Paddy, and for your voice and your heart and your keeping on, keeping on. <laughs> same, same How did you enjoy it. Bruce Arms? Aye, it's okay, it's good. Uh -huh. good it's a beautiful spot, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Great stuff. Okay, well, I will be seeing you soon. Thanks again so much for your time. Pleasure, William. Thank you. Cheers. You keep doing the great work you're doing and educating us all, you know. Thank you. Okay. Right. Cheers. <laughs>